Yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Um, should we kick off with Anton at Sky Sports News? Thank you. Hi, Serena. Hi, Millie. Nice to Hi. see you both. Um, but Serena, let's start off with the squad update. Is everyone fit? Is everyone available? And how difficult is it choosing 11 players to play in such a big game tomorrow? Yeah, everyone's fit, so that's really nice. And it has been very difficult. Um, so we're taking everything in consideration again and we're making final choices. How good are Sweden and how difficult a game is this going to be? Um, well, I think it's going to be a very tight game. Um, we know they've performed really well over the last years. They've always been performing really well in the women's game. Um, they're the number two on the FIFA ranking. Um, so yes, it's going to be a difficult game. I think totally different than what we had against Spain because they have a different style of play. But we are prepared. You don't need me to tell you how big this game is. How is everyone feeling going into this? Yeah, very excited, of course. Um, we had um, we did some recovery after the last game. Um, uh, get some, well, got fresh again. Uh, then we started uh, to prepare for the Sweden game, and everyone's so focused and so excited. And the level of training has been really high again, so it's really nice, and can't wait to play tomorrow. Millie, you've you've played in semi-finals before, but <coughs> how different does this feel? How different does this team feel going into this game? It's hard to compare. Each semi-final is different for their own reasons. Um, got new players in the squad, and we're on a new journey. Um, but yeah, I think we're just for the here and the now, uh, focused on the game and yeah, everyone's in great spirits and yeah, we just want to keep building our confidence and yeah, performing for the fans. Finally, we just heard from Magda Eriksson. She said she hasn't been in touch with anyone, but she might send one or two uh, teammates a, a message. Would you welcome that? What would you say back? We spoke early on in the tournament, but you know, when I'm in tournaments, it's all for England and that's the way I like to keep it. Very diplomatic. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Anton. We'll go to Emma at BBC, please. Thank you. Uh, hi, both. Millie, just one for you. Obviously, you've been part of some of those previous semi-finals. Um, is it kind of an advantage that there's some younger players now in the squad who kind of haven't had to experience those those difficult moments, but also there's that blend of the ones who can kind of pass on the knowledge and perhaps what you might have learnt from those hard, hard experiences? Yeah, I think either way you learn from the experiences. So the players that experienced them, you know, we've we've learnt a lot of lessons from them. Um, but to be honest, I think they're parked to one side. Like I said, we're on a new journey. We're in a different place completely as a team. Um, but also the youngsters have experienced, you know, big losses, uh, whether that be with a club. So even though they're young, they're still experienced in, in different ways. So, yeah, I think everyone is, is ready um, and ready for their roles. And Serena... During your time in England, have you kind of learnt what the magnitude of reaching a major tournament final would, would mean to, to this country? Well, I think reaching the semi-final has been really great too already and gives. Um, we saw that we brought a lot of inspiration, but I think our fans gave us a lot of inspiration too. So we just we only focus on tomorrow and that's what it is and we hope we'll get the result we want. And have you got a message for the fans who are going to come and support you tomorrow? Yeah, I hope they're going to bring us uh, lots of energy again. We'll do that ourselves, but it was really an extra thing, an extra dimension, what we got last uh, our last games. And that's really exciting, and we hope we're going to make them proud again. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. We'll go to John, <coughs> just next door. Serena, just wanted to ask you how strong the mentality is within this group, and have you actually seen it grow throughout the tournament? Um, well, I think the mentality has been good. Um, I have only seen good mentality, actually, since I came in last year, September. Um, I think the resilience has uh, been really good. I think the confidence in the team has grown. That has also gone over the year. Um, uh, we just really, we're really accountable for each other. And we had a little setback, of course, that's part of the game too, when you can see the goal. Uh, but we stayed calm, we stayed trying to play our game. And, um, well, and then the result game. So, um, yeah, I think, I think we're really strong um, and we can handle some setbacks. 
Yeah, Millie, I was just going to ask you about that. I mean, the, the game against Spain. Do you, do you think the players learned a lot from that? Because that, that was a really testing, difficult time, wasn't it, when you probably felt on, on, on edge. Just how much does that improve the players' mentality and the, and the strength of the group? Yeah, a lot. Um, but I think we went into that game knowing that that was a possibility. Um, you don't underestimate any opponent. Spain was a brilliant team, but for us it was how do we overcome that challenge? Um, and obviously in the past we've we've been scoring a lot of goals and kind of not faced that. But like Serena said, we stuck together, everyone remained calm. And I think there was always that belief that we would get our chance in front of goal and that we just needed to be clinical and take it. I think our resilience in games is, is growing each time, but we will fight from start to finish in every single match. Thanks, John. We'll just go uh, behind you, if that's OK. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Hi, Serena. You've, uh, you've spoiled Sweden's party twice, 2017, 2019. How different is uh, this squad compared to the one in 2019, would you say? Well, my squad is totally different because I'm the English manager now and it's a different situation. I would say the Sweden squad, sorry. Well, I'm now in the now, thinking in the now. Sweden has performed really well over the years uh, in the women's game um, uh, all the time. Um, we take it for now. We are England. Uh, so we have Sweden uh, is our opponent tomorrow. They have a very strong squad. Uh, so do we. Uh, and we just hope uh, we'll, we'll, we'll play our style of game and that will bring us the win. Do you think this record speaks for you in tomorrow's game? What do you mean? This winning record that you have against Sweden, does it speak for you in this game? Well, this is still a different situation in the now. Um, that doesn't count. Uh, it's tomorrow and only tomorrow. Millie, you play in the Women's Super League where we have uh, five, Swedish, five Swedish players uh, who are in the squad right now. You've gone up against uh, Stina Blackstenius uh, multiple times. How do you plan on stopping her tomorrow? I think everyone just has to stay remained, uh, focused on the game plan. Um, and yeah, as much as they pose a threat, it's it's about us collectively as a team, not individuals. Um, you know, posing our stamp on the game and, and showing the football that we can play. But defensively, we have to stay alerted um, and obviously nullify their threats. Thank you. That's a question next. Yeah. Next uh, time. Question for Serena. Uh, what's your view of of Sweden and the Swedish coach and the tactics he uses? I mean, you've played against them in in 2019 and I guess you've scouted them in the Euros also. Well, yeah, we, um, we just looked at what they've done lately. Um, they're very well organized. Uh, they do a couple of different things. Um, they are very experienced too. That's what we've seen. Um, strong, very good in set plays. Um, and, and yet they have some players that are really goal oriented. So um, yes, we are, we are aware of their um, strengths. How surprised are you by the Swedish performance so far in the tournament? Would you say that they reached their full potential yet? Well, I think every game is a different game. Um, as I said before, they, they always perform on the highest level in tournaments. They've showed that years and years. Uh, and the number two of the FIFA ranking. Um, so every, every game is different. Tomorrow is going to be a really tough game against a very... Um, you know, two opponents that are really uh, equal. Um, so I think it will be a different game than, for example, what we saw against Belgium. Um, so, um, yes, we're prepared. Thank you very much. We'll go right to the back and Tom Gary from Telegraph, please. Thank you. Thanks very much, Serena. Um, can I just ask, are, are this England team ready to go and make history? <laughs> the England team is ready to play the best game tomorrow against Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully we inspire the nation. And just on a, sorry for bringing this up, but um, in, in history, England's women's team have never won a penalty shootout. So if it goes okay. to penalties tomorrow, are England ready to, to win a shootout for the first time? We prepared for everything. Um, we've been talking about every scenario that can happen. So that's, um, uh, I think we're totally prepared for everything and then we'll see uh, how it develops tomorrow. Hi, Serena. Um, you've talked a lot about focusing on the now. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk about the previous semi-finals. Is that the way to forget about that, just to focus on now and, and look towards tomorrow and try and get everyone not in that negative mindset of what's happened in the past? Yeah, I think, um, I think it's necessary to be in the now. And I do think you always have to learn from your experience and take out the things that you can take to be better or become better or to learn. Uh, but it's, it's no use now to talk about that all the time because it's now. It is now. 
So why should we talk about that all the time? Thank you. Thanks, Molly. We'll go to Pierre. Question for Millie. Uh, from the beginning of the tournament, Fran Kirby is one of the best players. I was wondering, were you surprised that she managed to get a such good level, considering the fact that she did not play uh, from uh, February to June? No, absolutely not. Um, Fran is, you did say Fran, right? I did hear that correct, didn't I? Um, she's an incredible player, uh, but again, we're focusing on, on today and the game that we have tomorrow. Everyone's in a great place, and yeah, the past is the past, so just all eyes forward. Thanks, Pierre. Could we get the microphone to the front and we'll go to Matt Dunn at the Express, please? Is there a question at the back? Sorry, Catherine. Yeah, Sorry, yeah just no problem. Um, Serena, I know after the quarter final, you said um, you, went, you think you went a little bit crazy. Um, I was just wondering if England were to win tomorrow night, how much it would mean to you and whether we could expect a similar reaction again. I have no idea. <laughs> no, I think I'll be a little calmer. I think the whole situation for me was a little um, uh, different than it, than it normally is. I think winning a semi of a, yeah, a quarter final against Spain is not very normal either. Um, but um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm calm. Um, and we'll, we'll see tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks. Um, whilst you're back there then, Antoine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Serena, uh, like you said before, oh, I heard me. It's a quite a uh, word. And um, like you said before, it's now and it's another semi final for England. Um, it shows how women's football uh, actually grew up in the country. How much do you feel it's the moment to win a trophy? Well, we don't. We first have to play a semi-final, and that's the only thing that counts. And again, we're in the now. We all the focus is on our game tomorrow against Sweden. That's the only thing we talk about. How do we want to play? Um, and how do how do we how do we collaborate as a team? How do we try? How are we going to try to exploit uh, their weaknesses and take out their strengths and use our own strengths? That's the only thing we're talking about. Thank you. Thanks, Antoine. If we can get the microphone to the front, that'd be great. Thank you. Thanks very much. Perfect. We'll go to Matt at the Express. Hi, it's all familiar, actually. Um, without bringing up too many negative memories, semi-finals haven't been particularly kind to you personally, have they? Um, I just wondered, the fact that this one's so close to where you grew up, uh, and it feels more like on your, your territory. Do you think some of those, those bad memories in the past can be erased? And whether, I don't know how many times you went to Bramall Lane uh, as a girl, or, or whether that very unique atmosphere that there will be tomorrow night can, can help you know, make you feel at home, make you feel strong, make, you know, basically put the sort of performance you did in the last game, you know, again, to see England through this time. Yeah, I think every time I pull on the England shirt, I always feel at home, to be honest, um, no matter where I am. But yeah, I think in terms of the bad memories, it's it's a memory in, in my journey and, and our journey internationally. So yeah, I don't really want to erase any memories in football. Again, you just learn from, from the past and yeah, as long as you learn from that and take what you can from it, like Serena said, into the next games and the upcoming games, then that's, that's all you can do. But yeah, I would never want to erase um, any memories. But yeah, fully focused on the game. Obviously, it's, it's really nice to be back home and like you said, Back in my hometown. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to seeing the amazing fans in the crowd. So did you come to Bramall Lane much as a girl? Or? Uh, yeah, I've been a couple of times and been on at half time. So, yeah, it's really nice to be back. Thanks, Matt. Sorry. Hi, Millie. I mean, you just touched on it then, but for you, you grew up playing as a child just a couple of miles away. You're going to be coming back here to Sheffield tomorrow, putting on an England shirt. For you personally, how special an occasion is this? Yeah, it is massive. Um, obviously, coming back to Sheffield, but more importantly, we're playing in a, a home Euro semi-final against the top opposition. So for me, that that beats anything. Um, obviously, it's it's nice to be back. I think I'm most excited to have family in the crowd that have not been able to make any other games. Um, so yeah, just really excited. But yeah, most importantly, it's a it's a semi-final. I was speaking earlier on to Andy, your first ever coach. You were saying that you're trying to get him tickets. Are you going to have lots of people here tomorrow? And for you as a kind of a family and a friend's occasion, how big an occasion is that? Yeah, actually, my sister's been taking care of the tickets, so I've not had that, that stress of, of dealing with those. But yeah, I'm aware there's going to be a lot of people um, in the crowd from home. But yeah, just the fans have been incredible. So just really excited to see everyone. 
Spain, what have you made of them? Oh, Spain, Sweden, what have you made of them throughout the tournament? <coughs> Yeah, like we've said, they're a, a tough opponent. Um, they know how to play in tournament football. They they know how to get the job done and a real gritty team, um, both going forward and in defence. So, yeah, it's definitely not going to be an, an easy game. Thanks, Amy. Serena, just one quickly for Serena, if that's all right. I spoke to you just before the start of the tournament about the fact, obviously, the PE teacher and you were saying that you were really strict sometimes. Do you find that you're getting more strict as the tournament's going on or perhaps easing up a bit? Absolutely not. <laughs> not strict, not necessary. Everyone knows what we have to do. Everyone's really working on the job, so it's really relaxed. Thank you. If we can keep it to one question each, that would be great from here on in. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Salina, uh, Caroline Seger has missed the last two Swedish what? games. Sorry? Caroline Seger yeah, yeah, yeah. has missed the last two games. What's your thoughts about her and her impact on the Swedish team? Um, yeah, she's a very experienced player. I respect her a lot. She's done such a tremendous job in the women's game and for Sweden especially, of course. Um, so, yes, she's, she, I think she's one of the leaders in the team. They'll have more, but she's one of them. Thank you very much. We'll take a question just behind you. Thanks. Question for Serena. Uh, Frank Kirby said yesterday that she expects you to see more of the ball tomorrow compared to the game against Spain. How are you going to go about this? Is it about, is it about winning the ball back quickly or is it more about keeping the ball? Uh, I think both. We, we want to have the ball, but sometimes the game is, is goes or develops the way that sometimes you have to give, uh, leave the ball a little to the opponent. That depends uh, how, how it relates to each other. Uh, but we know we want to have the ball. Um, and I hope when we have the ball that we're tight and we're calm. Uh, but we also go forward and create some chances. And we hope we can do that a lot tomorrow. Thanks very much. We'll go to the end of the row and Amy. Thank you. A uh, question for Millie, please. Um, a lot of the Sweden players have talked about this game maybe suiting them more than the Belgian game, a little bit more open and a chance to counter. Is that something you've thought about and talked about, especially you as a centre-back, just being aware of that counter-attacking threat and maybe not playing too high tomorrow to, to let them expose that? I think we're aware of, of their threats. Obviously, we've, we've done our analysis and you know we prepare the same way for every single game. And I think every team poses a threat counter-attack-wise. But yeah, ultimately... No matter the opposition we play, we want to be tidy at the back and we want to be hard to beat. So, yeah, in that respect, nothing changes for us. Thank you. Mille, uh, Sweden's goalkeeper uh, Hedvig Lindahl said that uh, all pressure is on England and that England uh, has everything to lose. What do you feel about that and uh, do you feel the pressure? For us, we remain in our little bubble that we've been in from, from the start of the tournament. Um, everyone speaks about the pressure being on us, but we're embracing the, the atmosphere in the tournament so far has been outstanding. Um, and for us, like I said, nothing gets in our bubble, nothing gets out. And yeah, we stay focused on, on what we need to do in the game. Thank you very much. We'll go to Lindsay at UEFA, just behind you. Thanks. Lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, one for Millie, please. Um, Millie, I've seen that there's a fan zone opening in Sheffield to watch this match. Also Trafalgar Square, numerous places in London opening up. How unusual for you as a squad is it to see that sort of response? I think it's a response that we've we've been looking for and that we've wanted in the women's game. Um, and I think this tournament, you know, the crowd has been, like I said, unbelievable. The support, whether people have been coming, watching at home. Um, the messages that have been getting sent in um, have been outstanding and we're super grateful for that but I think it just shows the growth of the game and the direction that we're wanting to continue in. Thanks Lindsay. We'll finish with two questions. We'll finish. We'll go there first. Thank you. Uh, this is for Serena and Millie both. How important that moment against Spain with the two late goals going through that adversity and being tested in that way seeing as you guys hadn't conceded you hadn't really had much difficult and difficulty scoring. How important was that moment as a team? Yeah, that was so important that we now sit here. So that's really nice. Uh, now I think for the team that we showed that we stayed calm, that we stick with the plan and everyone kept doing her job. Um, and we still believe that, that, that we're gonna, we were going to make it happen. And I think going through that and being that successful and then going back to, to playing our staff play again, I think that really helped the team and really showed our resilience. So that's a big step in our development. 
Just the same. Um, I think we showed a different way of winning. Um, obviously, Spain had a lot of the ball, but for us, it was about how we found that way to win and our resilience throughout the game and being able to play under that extra pressure of you know needing the goal and then needing an extra one to, to go through. So, yeah, I think we, we proved a lot to ourselves and everyone out there. Thank you very much. We'll finish with Sandra from The Sun. Sorry, Millie, I'm going to have to shout. It's just a question for me. I hope you're well. I just wanted to find out from you how you feel uh, your mentality and the mentality of the team has changed since that third place playoff in 2019 against Sweden. How does it feel within the team now? Um, we're on a new journey. It's a, it's a new path for us as a group. Um, like I said, different players in. So for us, it, it's kind of a, a fresh slate almost. Um, and again, we focus on the here and the now and the position we're in as a squad um, going into this game is, you know, we're in a very good position and yeah, we're ready to, to fight in the game. So yeah, it's um, everyone's feeling great. Thanks, Sandra. Thanks to you all. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, Matt. See you tomorrow. Yes. Have a good evening. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks.